Hello fellow builders and welcome to today's episode and today we are going to be looking at plots 41 to 55 at Shadow Kingdom Creative Build Discovery Server and seeing what more hints, tips, tricks, do's and don'ts we can find as we look at today's plots and the first one is a doozy so let's get straight on in and enjoy today's episode. So here we are at build 41, which is titled Silverstone Hold by uh, Rift Droppy. Uh, and I thought we'd start today's episode looking from above just to get that uh, wonderful distant view of uh, such a packed, detailed, impressive build uh, uh, today. And now that we've had a look at it from above, let's go down to the detail. And we're going to start here at the beginning of the plot. But we're not going up the path. No, we're going upstream. Ha <laughs> ha Because we can. And straight away, this is a little thing I know. Uh, a humble little build, a little uh, logging area. But what I like and what I think is worth pointing out about this is that this shows that the builder has good knowledge of how this kind of build would appear in the real world. You would find these uh, places by uh, fast moving rivers, uh, the river would be powering the machinery, soaring the logs, and the logs would be sent downstream. Uh, so uh, this is what I'm kind of getting at is that the more you know about buildings and the way they work, whether you're building modern or medieval or whatever, the more you know, the more accurate you can get. And so the better the build is, frankly, from my point of view at least. Uh, so lovely little detail. Uh, again, let's just take a moment to geek out at the trees here. I do like how there's lots of different uh, styles of, of custom trees. Uh, put in here um, it gives it a, a bit more of an organic a real world feeling there's not often that you see all the same tree uh, in, a, in a, a wooded area they're usually mixed particularly in mature forests like this so lovely little details here we've got some beautiful stone uh, walls uh, and fortified structures here uh, really nice um, uh, if we're going to get into real world geekiness uh, those arrow slits are probably a little bit low but we'll let them away with it because it's minecraft why not uh, and nice little buildings here with little uh, patches of growth which are wonderful but let's have a look inside the town and this is where things get quite impressive this is a plot that you need to come and see if you want to learn how to detail because every little nook and cranny of this build is filled with little details of plants and trees and fences and little uh, stores for the fuel for the fires and, and the, uh, these wonderful wee, got a bit of a glitch there these wonderful market stores here um, wonderfully uh, set out if we look at it uh, from above just very organically not not in straight lines not in rows but dotted around the place uh, which gives it that again slightly more medieval feel and wherever you go there's more and more details and every interior is also done in this place it's from a detailing point of view very impressive a nice little church building here doesn't need to go over the top but just finished off really nicely um, and to a good standard there, there really are no blank spots on this and you'll see as well lots of diagonal builds lots of different builds again gives it that feel of of kind of really being in a live place and not just uh, a rendering in blocks in in the way that minecraft can sometimes look as you go up through the city you get these flags and forges and uh, fantastic details here there and everywhere uh, as you look around uh, little storage areas one thing i would say uh, on this is that you can't actually get into the keep from ground level as far as i can see which seems a bit of a shame because uh, the the keep area looks really good again fantastic uh, builds really good turrets and towers and 
all good stuff there. Uh, you can't really get at them from floor level, so uh, maybe it would have been worth putting one more gatehouse in there, I don't know. Um, I suppose a matter of opinion. But there we are, uh, plot 41, Rift Droppy, uh, great medieval town scenes, are well done. On to uh, build 43, the Cliffs of Argonath by Berlion, I think it is. Uh, and here, for the first time, we've seen a trick that I have seen before, but not very often. Uh, and this is the mirror builds, trying to get that idea that the water is reflective by building the exact same as the above sea level, only downwards into the ground to make it look like it's a reflection. It's a really uh, neat little trick. You've done the boat there, which is which is, uh, which is great. Um, I've not seen it done for this much of a plot though. And as much as I like the trick, I think it's slightly immersion breaking because of the gray sides and the gray floor on this. I wonder, and I don't know because I never tried this myself, I wonder if you put uh, some kind of blue block on the bottom, it might look like it's reflecting the the sky, uh, which normal water would, of course. Water often looks blue because it's reflecting the sky. So maybe putting uh, blue at the bottom there might uh, keep the illusion a little bit more effectively. But really, uh, nice idea, good work, well done. Um, I would say that great terraining, really solid. It's a bit bare though. I would have liked to see much more uh, buildings and structures, some kind of um, telling of a story. Um, it feels just a, a little bit empty. Great skills shown, but just doesn't quite feel like a finished plot to me. Um, I would love to see something really special done with that that area there, just to top it off. But really, really good effort there. Um, I, I would say, you know, for instance, these docks, uh, it's a perfectly reasonable structure, but it's completely empty. The idea that a dock would have nothing on it seems very strange indeed. No uh, chests, no um, anvils, no, you know, any signs of it actually being a used dock are not there. So those, as we were saying on the last uh, plot, those details really bring something to life. But as we've pointed out before, look, uh, these steps are supported by those stone fences, which is much more realistic than if they'd not been there in this uh, staircase would have been floating in midair. So well done with that one. Uh, nice effort, barely on. On to plot 45, no sorry, 44, uh, Butterflies Away by Unnatural. Uh, and what a riot of colour. I do not think I've seen another plot even half as colourful as this. Uh, some really wild block choices in here. Um, which, hey, why not? I find the terrain a little bit dizzying with all of that colour, but in terms of the organic plants uh, re it's really nice I love this uh, idea of this tree here with these massive climbing flowering vines uh, twisting around it that's a, a really interesting touch and there's some lovely organics throughout these orchid like flowers are, uh, are very pretty very effective and the little to toadstools uh, and these obviously as the name of the plot implies little butterflies Really nice. A, 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 for me, a tiny bit pixel art there, but I suppose how else would you do a butterfly? That's a, a challenging uh, subject to render in blocks, that's for sure. Um, what I would uh, like to point out is that I think I'm fairly confident in saying that some of these flowers will obviously have been uh, copied and pasted around the plot, but because there is so much detail in here, there are so many things, it's very difficult to spot that that's happened. And they're also spread apart from each other, like that orchid there, that white orchid there, and this one here. Because you don't have them all in your eyesight at the same time, you don't really clock that it's probably the same build copy and pasted, which is a very clever idea. If you're going to do that copying and pasting, don't put them all close together where you can see them all at the same time because then it becomes very obvious. The illusion is broken. Uh, but uh, a lovely, very different plot there. Uh, a feast for the eyes. And here we are 
build 45 Redland, Redland, Redland by Boris Shaolin, uh, which uh, is something that we've seen before in terms of content. It's a, another uh, dockside town, but this is done uh, slightly differently in places and some interesting unique details, an uh, interesting palette choice, uh, refraining from using the wooden docks and going for these colourful red and grey stone docks, uh, which makes for a little bit of point of a difference. One of the things I like the most about this plot is that it's a lot of familiar ideas done slightly differently with a little bit of personality, because obviously when you see a lot of medieval uh, builds on Minecraft, they can start to look a little bit samey, but this cannot be said of this plot. It's a brave choice using the greys for the boat instead of uh, wooden plank blocks, but I think it works. I think it key keys it in with the rest of the theme of the red. These uh, sails are great. You'll notice that they are not symmetrical. It's a really uh, easy way of making these uh, organic shapes of canvas look a little bit more realistic. If you make them too symmetrical, it kind of makes it look a little bit artificial. So well done, nice, nice touch to that there. So lovely boats, lovely docks, uh, and cute little uh, trees there. But these buildings uh, are what I wanted to look at next and what I like about these, although they are not too big, not too fancy, not in any sense epic, they are different. As I've said before, you see a lot of medieval style builds, they all start to look the same. So these have got a real distinct feel, a uh, slightly um, different culture happening in this place, nicely interiored as well. Um, what I would have actually liked to see is, it looks like, and maybe I'm wrong, I hope I'm not, is that there's, there's a, a suggestion that these are built on stone mounds. If that's the case, then it might have looked even nicer if uh, these stone mounds were on the top of uh, kind of grassy knolls and this was like rolling hills a little bit to, to make them blend into the terrain. Uh, perhaps that's not what's going on at all, uh, but that's what it appears to be to me. So uh, that's the way I'm taking it. I like the use of uh, space in this build as well. It's not a big plot at all, but there is little details everywhere. These little mines and mine shafts. And let's get down here because I know there's something hidden down here that we should look at. Uh, this, uh, the green cave. You see, there's lots of details on this plot that are interesting and unique and different. Uh, they're not overly complicated, but it just makes a plot that little bit more interesting when you find things that you don't expect to find. Um, so that's just one example. I like the way, now let me see where are we. I'm going to get lost here because it's a bit of a maze of a plot, but here we go. I like the way as well the, the way up to the upper levels is hidden inside these tunnels, uh, inside the rocks. Uh, again, uh, a point of difference, a style choice of the culture of the people uh, living in this place that they've uh, hewn out of the rock these uh, ways up. Uh, probably very good defensively, actually, thinking about it. Um, and then you've got these more grandiose buildings up at the top, which are charming again. Uh, these the details on the walls, you don't often see that much wall detailing on the interiors of builds. Um, but there we are, uh, another point of difference, another uh, style difference. Let's have a quick look up at the top here. It's a little bit tricky to get up, but again, you see, very, very different. Maybe a little bit heavy on the... Uh, dark oak but uh, very solid building skills now can we get out of these windows am i small enough i bet i'm not ah nope we're gonna have to go back down the stairs Whew. but i can do it let's just finish the plot off we might as well whilst we're here over the lovely little bridge very quaint and up to this last build here again you see the details there very unique very original style so uh well done there, Boris Shaolin. Enjoyed your plot. Thanks for letting us have a look. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have something really very special here. Plot 46, Aqueous Ruins by Sway945. And I think you will agree, this is glorious. There really is uh, so much to see on this plot. It 
it is unbelievable that the skill that has been shown in every aspect of the build from the uh, the structures the organics both plant and animal uh, to the terraining uh, everything on this plot is just sublime and i think you'll agree with me this way is a, a substantially uh, talented builder uh, and we're gonna have a little explore around and see what we can find here i'm sure we'll only see a fraction of what makes this uh, special uh, but look at that little sea serpent in the cave there brilliant uh, there are a few things that i do want to point out uh, as points to consider and ways we can learn from uh, Sway and his plot here and the first thing is the palette choice the block colors that have been used have been chosen to be really really harmonious this particularly the bluey green color against the uh, yellow of the sand if you uh, know anything about your color theory uh, you'll realize that they are two out of the three uh, kind of close to primary colors blue and yellow and then you have these hints of the the reds and purples that accent uh, throughout the plot giving it a real feeling of balance and uh, i think that's really important something that's perhaps missed by a lot of uh, builders is uh, really go go and find something out about color theory uh, watch a few youtube videos find a few websites there's loads of resources out there that can teach you about color theory and then apply it when you are choosing blocks for your builds when you're deciding what's going to go with what that's what you need to do now as well as that i want to point out this terraining here because we are obviously in an underwater scene here so these aren't mountains it isn't grass and stone like perhaps a lot of other plots so uh, sway has instead uh, created these kind of shelf like uh, structures with the cave like uh, things underneath them and it's very like coral reefs uh, you'll see if you look at photos of coral reefs they they have these shelf like features with caves and uh, little areas underneath them and that seems to be the inspiration for the terraining here and it works really really well some lovely details of the anchor and the treasure chest there really kind of adding a little bit of story to this uh, i do wonder though that these buildings are uh, seem enormous then you'll look at them next to the chest and they're quite tiny uh, hints maybe at a, a whole other civilization of tiny creatures under the sea that we don't actually get to see in this build but uh, uh, really interesting there uh, the other thing is because this is underwater the spacing out of all of these builds uh, throughout the depth of the plot right the way from the bottom all the way up to the top here including these columns of bubbles really gives a feeling of depth everything is not just flat against the the terrain down at the bottom there's a real sense of being in the water because these bubbles of the the jellyfish and the fish shoals of fish all at different levels uh, and all evenly spread out throughout the plot makes a marvelous effect of depth she's uh, really good the last thing that i wanted to point out uh, on this plot is actually specifically to do with these structures and these would be great on any plot uh, i think you'll agree but i found the way that sway has detailed these walls to be particularly interesting very often when you see detailing on large structures like this they will be symmetrical or nearly symmetrical but what sway has done here is used these uh, stair and slabs uh, the quartz stairs and slabs in these really interesting intricate patterns that are not at all uh, symmetrical they're, they're they're different they they kind of feel a little bit organic in themselves these kind of curls and swirls and even down to the the diagonal structure underneath this bridge here uh, is fascinating and uh, an interesting and different style it shows a bit more technicality to it and uh, he's done some of the uh, detailing uh, a bit more 
symmetrical in places like this. You can see that, that, that mirrors down the middle line. So it's a kind of a bit of a mix of everything, which I think works really well. He's even bothered to do interiors. Ooh, interiors inside here, which is fantastic. I think you'll agree this may just be one of the best builds we've looked at yet um, on these tours around the creative plot so well done sway thank you for letting us have a look at your plot uh, and guys have a go try and rip off some of sway's ideas try and uh, imitate his style because it is a wonderful wonderful uh, style of building on now to build 47 santa's workshop yes we're a few weeks late now we're in the middle of january uh, but we are going to revisit christmas one last time for this uh, quite special plot here uh, built by oh, 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 oh. silly name silly name but uh, uh oh, oh fantastic builder regardless uh, we're gonna have a look at some of what makes this build so special now because it's a charming little building full of fun and humor uh, and starting from the very outset with this little uh, inlet, this bay here. Um, little note on the, the, the water here, look how the, the waves wash into the bay, quite realistically crashing there, really nice. We're not going to spend too much time looking at the serious details because this is a fun plot though, with the candy canes and the, the lights. Uh, and so many charming charming features let's look, look over the top first before we go underneath because there's a lot to this plot this has so much detail it is crazy uh, let's just have a little look around and appreciate some uh, great little uh, dolls there very nutcracker-esque uh, loving the the musical notes in the air just to to give a suggestion of music which is a, a wonderful little touch there the snow globe uh, very uh, nicely neatly done in there very good uh, so many details uh, that are all really quite fun and bright and festive and what that i think does is it sets this plot apart from others uh, there are uh, so many fairly similar styles that you see uh, on builds uh, medieval fantasy uh, kind of the similar ideas uh, coming up and up and again and again and again this is one of the ways you can make your plot stand out is by picking a really unique theme and maybe being a bit fun uh, hard to do uh, hard to do well but if you can do it it really makes people uh, take a do a double take when they arrive at your plot and go wow i have not seen that before that's a reaction that you really want to try and get from people uh, and it's hard to do but it will make your plot stand out i love these uh, little colorful trees as well uh, just to add that little uh, comical fun touch and these uh, beautiful bright gingerbread-esque houses uh, are they done interiors as well Come on, all hail the holy pickle, praise and be free. Okay, uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, moving swiftly on, I think now we should delve into the grotto itself because this is clearly not just an inlet of any old variety. This is the launch pad of the sleigh and reindeer. And look at these reindeer, how fantastic are they? For such a small build, they they are just so full of life. They're fantastic. And then here you can see the, the sleigh itself being raised up on this uh, moving platform. There's a real sense of storytelling happening there. Uh, kind of in the way that the build's been structured that you can imagine this rising up majestically out of the ground to be tethered to the uh, to the reins of the reindeer and all of these presents on these uh, uh, grabbing arms giving that feel of, of a mechanized workshop uh, again storytelling in the building is very clever way of doing things now i am going to attempt not to get lost in here but there is a lot of stuff in here uh, to see and do and i am not sure where to start so let's go down here i think yes and 
again, look at the, the use of the, the different glass to give that mirrored feel. It's a very uh, uh, clever little technique worth practicing and using. We've seen it on water before and on uh, mirrors. Uh, that gives that idea that that tunnel goes on and on and on into the darkness, even though it doesn't. It's uh, about, I don't know, eight, ten blocks thick at most. A uh, very clever little illusion. Uh, right, where next? Um, ooh, 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 glitching off the wall a little bit there. That's the problem with flying around these plots sometimes. Ah, there we are. There's the stairs and the guardian elf tree production this way. Okay. Down into the depths and a lovely sense of space here. I love how you come into the upper level of this room. Uh, another uh, clever technique there. Instead of bringing your stairs right the way down to the bottom of a large room, bring people in to the top, uh, and then they can peer down and they get a bird's eye view of your of your structure. Which is a clever way of presenting your ideas. Again, that mirror trick there as these trees are assembled on this assembly line very cleverly done some furnaces there i don't know if they're for the dead ones that's a slightly morbid idea isn't it uh, then uh, the the mirror effect again there and uh, these little touches of closed for renovation <laughs> i wonder um <laughs> look at that it really does give the sense of scale because as big as this room is it's not massive as a room but when you look through here and go whoa this place is enormous that's really a neat little idea uh, to make the place feel uh, vast as opposed to just large um, right where to go next one thing i really love and uh, this is a quick cut here is uh, little touches of humor here little quotes from uh, Dr. Seuss, the Grinch there, great use of the, the, the armor stands there to create little people, tell stories, wonderful, wonderful plot, and uh, guys, I would uh, I would really recommend getting in here and exploring for yourself, because I have scratched the surface of this plot, it really is a wonderful, wonderful build. Okay folks, I know I said we were going to do all the way to plot 55 in this video, but you know what, it's taken so much time to see those enormous and impressive plots that we're going to split this episode down into a part 1 and part 2. So for now guys, this is the end of part 1. Don't worry, part 2 will be coming in the very near future, hopefully in the next few days, when you can see the rest of the plots up to plot 55. In the meantime, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, we are getting closer to the uh, magic 100 number and we'll see you in part two